Well, we're uh, out here on a crisp November morning at a hard rock mine and uh, gotten together here with Dale, the, uh, the owner of California Sluice Box. Dale has put together a prototype of a new trommel that he's going to be selling. And this trommel is 10 feet long. All right, got a reverse helix. I think I put it right where the red truck is. And we are about to try and get it off the truck that weighs about 600 pounds. Yeah. And get it placed and we'll start running some material here. All this right. This is a spot. Okay, over well, here is Lane. Now. If we can get it off. And there's should. Mark. And there's Dale. And here is Ron. And between the bunch of us, we should be able to get this puppy off the truck. All right? All right. As we look up the hillside, you can see the point where I'm digging into the hill right there. And running, you've got a big uh, long tom sluice set up up there. Or a long sluice, let me say it from that standpoint. All right. And now we're looking for a spot to uh, position the trommel and see what we can get going. All right, well, the creek behind me is dry right now because we've had no rain. The only source of water that the boys have to work their material here is from an old hard rock mine. Now, this is a shaft right here. And this thing, at one point, went down a thousand feet. Uh, foresters came through and pushed a whole bunch of tailings into it, and it's probably only about 50 feet down now. But uh, it is full of water, as you can probably see right down here. All right, they're running their foot valve from their pump straight up here, then all the way across. The hillside. I'm gonna have to swing around to get a little better shot here. Catch a better view here. All right. And the water line runs across the little gully here on up. And there you can see their high banker sluice set up up on top and the area behind it now we're standing on tailing plow there's a tailing plow here that runs about a hundred yards by oh 40 50 yards and this whole mountain side is nothing but a giant tailing plow all right back behind me The other side of the deep shaft, as you go back up the hill, All right. well, we'll stop here. This is the uh, concrete pudding that they had set in for their derrick. Not really a headpiece, but uh, it was to run a winch and uh, pulleys down into the mine. All right, right back up here, you can see a stack of waste rock, and that waste rock one runs another, oh, 60, 100 yards back up the creek. So they were pulling their waste rock out and stacking it behind them up the, uh, up the creek there so they could work in this particular area. The mineralization uh, of this area is amazing. Just zero in on a chunk of rock here. All right, this is, it is. Well, let's see, it's not really a good looking piece of, uh, of ore. Let's see if I can find another nicer looking piece of ore here in a second and we'll go from there. 
but uh, yeah, highly mineralized ground here. Okay, it sounds like the boys are working down to level an area for the trauma. I hear the sound of shovels, which means work is being done. And being the smart one of the group, I've got the camera in my hand instead of a shovel. Okay. Well, there's the work taking place. I don't know exactly what they're planning on doing, but uh, we'll check it out a little bit later. All right. Well, after a lot of jockeying around with the truck and fun stuff, we finally got the... Uh, trommel up on the hillside here and the fascinating thing about the trommel or excuse me where the trommel is located is we're gonna have to hike up the hillside here we have it bucked up against the back of believe it or not an old arasta all right and this is the rest, you can see the, uh, the curved edge down here where the wheel would go around and grind the ore <coughs> and mill it basically so they could, uh, they could run it. All right. And I'm going to try to get a little better shot here of the Arasta. All right. And you can see there was a center post, then it had an axle coming off the center post. It went through a round rock, large round rock, and went in a circle. In the old days, they would have a donkey burrow or something like that pulling the uh, uh, axle around. And uh, I don't know exactly how they were working it up here, but what we'll do is we will run back downstream here because the old wheel for the Arasta is located down here. Where's the wheel? Right over here? Uh, Left? There we go. Yeah, that's just about it. Where is it? There it is. Okay, and now we can see the old Arasta wheel down here on the creek bed. And uh, this just means that the history, the mining history in this particular area is absolutely fascinating. Well, here we are at the uh, top of the hill where the boys have got their uh, sluice set up and they're digging back into the hillside here. All kinds of crushed quartz in here and they're getting a lot of uh, specimen gold. And here's a handful of material that Dale has brought down. to so look, look at that beautiful stuff. I mean, it's everything that you would want to, want to see in material to run. All right. There we go. All right. Let's take a quick look at uh, what the boys are doing here. All right. Here's a Pearl Line High Banker. All right. They're shoveling into that. It runs into an Angus McKirk sluice. Comes down into another Angus McCurk sluice, so it's basically a pro-line Angus McCurk, Angus McCurk, and then a uh, standard sluice, I don't know if that's an A51 theme or what it is, but uh, 
you know, it's just your standard sluice right there at the end. So any material that uh, starts way up there will definitely settle out before it gets down to there. Yeah, as you turn around, tell, tell the folks how much gold you're getting here. Zero. Zero, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no gold at all. No gold you're, at all. You're just getting exercise. That's it. That's kind of what I thought, right. Poor man's aerobic. <laughs>